Hi everyone, Dave here. This is my latest solar-powered Peltier refrigerator test. It's important to note that the dimensions are almost identical to my 12-volt compressor-based refrigerator, and that's why I chose this styrofoam box for the test. And I'll insert a clip of that somewhere in here. So that's why I'm using it as a comparative test. Currently it is holding the temperature at about 37 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the thermometer on the left. And Celsius is 3 degrees Celsius. The hot side is 82.5 Fahrenheit, which is 28.1 Celsius. And it's also important to note that inside this box are drinks. So there's an actual thermal mass inside this box that's having to be cooled down. It's not just a box full of cold air. And of course that test is valid too, but a real test is to put drinks and food in here and see what happens. Now I will say this box is not well sealed. It's just taped and there's, you know, a block of wood and there's a, just random stuff laying there to sort of insulate it and it's not perfectly done. So that means the efficiency could be so much better. It is DC, so it really doesn't matter how you power it, but of course it can run off of solar panels or a 12-volt battery. I've been testing with that battery there as part of my setup. Now the freezer is a separate project, although I am in the 30s. The efficiency of my designs have gotten better and better and better. And I'm budgeting about 50 watts because when you think about it, a freezer of this size, a refrigerator of this size, with a compressor usually uses about 50 watts. Although it wasn't very clear from the beginning, my goal is to get as much cooling as I can for about 50 watts of power. This little test chamber that I have is about one liter of capacity and the box that I'm testing today is about 18 liters, so much bigger. And as I've gone through all the iterations and all the design tests, I've come up with a novel uh, configuration of Peltier elements. I would like to make videos and tutorials on how to do that, but I can tell you that the way that I've use the Peltiers in here is not like anything I've seen anywhere. Um, I barely look at anything on YouTube, but the few videos I made the mistake of looking at, which are very negative on Peltiers, it's, it's, a different, it's a different way of using them. And it's a little bit complicated, however, the results speak for themselves. And I never thought I'd see such low temperatures for so little power in such a big and poorly insulated box. I've been taking a lot of notes, and I keep stacking up papers, and I'm just trying everything that I think should work. Not the usual stuff you see on YouTube and on websites, but trying different things, new things, and I've ordered some styrofoam to try to make something more respectable. I might use a cooler, I just really can't decide. I want something that's durable. This foam is of course delicate. I figure if I get a nice shell around this that's well insulated and doesn't have holes for air to come in, this thing is going to perform extremely well. I mean, it's doing well enough even in the current state that it's in. It doesn't have to be water-cooled, and actually it would be nice to get a big heat sink and a heat pipe and a fan, but right now I don't have those things. I have this. And this allows me to scientifically monitor how much heat is being pulled out because the heat goes into this water and I can easily monitor that and it's a certain volume of water so it means you can calculate how much heat energy is being stored. Try that with air. You heat a certain volume of water a certain number of degrees and you can calculate how much heat or at least estimate how much heat was pulled out. Of course uh, you can also try to calculate how much heat the pelletier has generated as well as how much heat was pulled out of the food that was inside. You know, 37 degrees, I'd like to be a little colder than that. However, it's, it's great compared to what I was getting. And the best part is I didn't have to put more power into this. I'm putting about the same amount as my other tests, but I'm conditioning a pretty large space and it's poorly insulated. If I just had an empty box, this would be probably a lot lower. It takes much more effort to keep a thermal mass cold than it does the air. So that's with something actually in the box that it's, uh, running about 37 degrees. I must say that in the past uh, quite a lot of people have been posting on my Peltier videos and mentioning things like they're 5% efficient and they're not efficient and it doesn't work well and blah 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 blah. But I couldn't help but be curious where is all this negativity against Peltiers coming from? I don't look at YouTube, I don't look at other people's work. I want to follow my own path and I made the mistake of going to look at a few Peltier videos on YouTube and I was shocked. There are large channels, even small channels, that are pushing information that's just plain wrong. Rather than be negative, I'm looking into it from a scientific point of view and I'm going through many different steps and I find out what works and most importantly what doesn't work. Over the hours of work that I put into this, I've started to learn how to use pelters efficiently and efficiency is what I'm targeting here. But it takes time to figure out what works and what I found doesn't work, following the advice on YouTube. And there's nothing I can do about the bad information on YouTube. It's full of bad information. It's an absolute minefield. So I can't really push back from such a small platform as this. Did this work on my own? I didn't listen to the negativity. It's already bearing fruits.